I don't know why, but at this, the center of this zone, I envision a large New England style barn, and it looks very wilderness, but inside it has a high-tech convention feature. Um, my hope with this sort of structure is uh, we can use it for various convention, trade shows, um, and promoting our local businesses, and the, um, also holding pop-up warehouse sale by premium brand. I think it very interesting, it's very different. We all love bargain. I mean, company like Stickley and Audi, Lillian August, Restoration Hardware, Stock Carpet, from time to time, they hold these pop-up warehouse sales. And why not rent the space for this premium brand to hold something very different, unique, a pop-up warehouse clearance sale? Um, and from there, we can extend this to food and dining option. We can use our local seasonal crop as inspiration. We have a local chef here, Tim LeBan, who already practiced farm to table concept. How about seeking some investor to partner with our chef and local farm to form a sort of like a food and agriculture center similar to what is happening in Bedford with the Blue Hill at Stone Barn. At the very least, how about inviting Seth to hold a pop-up restaurant in Walton and use our local produce as inspiration. So in conclusion, um, let's start with the vision, which is nature mid future, and from here it can lead to many different business ideas, big and small, across different category and different aspect of life. And this development can be planned strategically and broken down into many different phases. And you know, we don't have to stop here. Once we draw in more visitors in town, I think it's time for Walton to think about the next phase, which is an eco-friendly luxury resort. So. <laughs> Thank you, I feel like we just got to go. I sort of feel like our town needs to pay you after that presentation. <laughs> um, so I, I want to toss it now to the panel first. I don't know if this one's on, but I want to toss it to the panel about um, what you liked about that idea and what you see working or what you see our next steps could be to put that into play. Um, okay, there's a couple things about that I, I really like. Um, you know, so I think to your point, if you look at what's in Wilton right now from a manufacturing and office um, standpoint, um, it's a hodgepodge, right? They're big companies, they're small companies, they're companies that make things, they're companies that provide services, they're companies that may just have sort of an, an outpost office, but there is no, there's no theme to it. And that's probably true of most office space in most towns in most states you know everywhere in the world but it, but it is interesting and there are places where um, communities or or state or in cooperation with state government have said we're going to develop a corridor that is focused on this sort of business um, obviously that piece of your presentation is a much longer term approach right? it takes time you know especially as you go up you know, just knowing based on where I live, as you go up Route 7, like you lack infrastructure. We don't even have city water. So, you know, if you're going to have something in there that's manufacturing something, you probably are not going to stick a hose in the river. You probably need city water. Um, so there's parts of it that I think are long term, but, but it's a very interesting vision to say the town is going to actively go after, and, and you're right, probably in cooperation with the state, um, a certain type of business that we'd like to bring in here. Uh, and, and become known as the corridor of the sector for something. Um, some of the other things that you presented at the end, I think, are much more achievable in the short term, right? It's, you know, the pop-up around food, farm-to-table, uh, you know, retail, those sorts of things. And it's interesting uh, going back to um, uh, comments before about the amount of uh, vacant retail space. I mean, it's not like we don't have places to put things if we wanted to put them. Now, I also know. I say that, but out of the other side of my mouth, you know, I sort of 
this is the season of the year where these sort of pop-up Halloween stores come up mm -hmm. all over the place. And they kind of depress me because it, it sort of screams loser vacant retail space that you can't figure out what else to do with, so stick a pop-up Halloween store in it for two months. So I, I think there's like a way to do it that it, tastefully that, that could be done better. But you know, who knows? Maybe some of those things become permanent after some time. I mean, I don't want to be the wet blanket, but um, in, our, in our strategic recommendations, we identified about 20 properties that were underdeveloped, um, but there really doesn't exist a type of property that could handle your big vision. You know, there's, you know, we don't have you know, that much, we don't have a big industrial park where we could, we could drop somebody like Tesla into, so I'd love to call them up and say, come here, but I'm not sure we'd have a spot for them. Is there? I mean, you know, on a smaller scale? Uh, much smaller. Yeah. You did bring up some interesting things because the world is changing so fast. When you start talking about technology, um, you know, millennials think very different than us. Um, and if you look at the type of office product that's being uh, offered out in the marketplace, there's a company called WeWork. I don't know if anyone's familiar with that. But uh, it's essentially, they take big blocks of space all over the world, M Manhattan, they started in Manhattan, and they rent uh, you know, 30, 40,000 square feet, and they rent offices by the month. And they have a keg on tap, 24-7, 365. It's got couches, TVs. I mean, it, it's really geared towards the way millennials think. They don't want any limits, they want to be able to just get up and walk around and, and do what they want. I, I don't think Walton has anything like that. Um, even retail, you know, um, you know, so different today. You know, stores are installing beacons, which are essentially little technology things that when you're walking like an Apple store and they send you text as you're walking the store, like something's for sale. Um, you know, so it's, it's not really the economic development's job to come up with this technology, but to think ahead. And even the architecture in, uh, in Wilton, you know, it's, it's Wilton, it's a New England town, but, you know, to kind of forward thinking, maybe, uh, you know, that's for the P and Z to start thinking about how can we make Wilton attractive for not 2015, but 2050, you know. So, and I think you made a really good point about thinking ahead. Um, I think that the going green thing is huge. I was just um, overseas, and there were just so many things that I think that we could capitalize on by making that our identity, um, because we struggle so much on the identity side. Um, I have customers that come to my store from Darien and New Canaan, and believe it or not, they ask me to ship their product to them when it's finished, because they think it's so far to Wilton. So, um, and I'm not kidding, I've had people, um, you know, come from Westport and think, say to us, I've never seen Wilton Center, I never knew it existed. So on a very short term level, I think we need to um, make Wilton Center so that everyone can find it. Um, and I love the idea of doing something where we identify ourselves in a big campaign on the green side. You know, even having the, in Europe they had these little garbage things that you had your recyclables, your papers, your whatever, much better than in Grand Central but set up so that it really looked modern and appealing to young families that we were going in that direction. So I think it's a great start in a direction, and I think the biggest obstacle we have really with a lot of these things is planning and zoning. And I think we all need to kind of work together between your commission, the Chamber of Commerce, um, and, and landlords and everybody. Okay. Thank you, Jenny. Thank you very much. So I think um, that we just finished up talking about branding. I think that's a great segue to our next presenter, who is Neil Gluckin. Good evening, everyone. That was a wonderful presentation, really excellent. and. Um, you could think uh, about what I'm going to say now in a way as a way to validate 
the concepts that, um, that Jenny offered us. I don't have a presentation prepared per se, but I do have the note that I wrote originally, and I'm going to share parts of it with you and then elaborate a bit. Um, I wrote that the town of Wilton should undertake a comprehensive, action-oriented planning exercise whose objective is to formulate a long-term vision for our community and to identify the most important steps we need to take to achieve and sustain it. So the vision idea is really central to this. Um, and where I may be differing a bit from what Jenny is talking about is that I'm thinking long term. I'm thinking we should know what does success look like five years from now, 10 years from now, 20 years from now. And one of the reasons I think it's particularly important that we take this extended view is the strong possibility, and a few minutes in the research section of the library will make this clear to almost anybody, that the commuter-based, standalone suburban community that Wilton has been for most of its career is becoming an increasingly unsustainable model uh, for, a, for a number of reasons. And um, uh, I would love to come back and make a presentation about those reasons, but I'm not a planner. Um, and so I'm just going to ask you to join with me in a little bit of an intuitive exercise in thinking about um, how much longer uh, can communities that depend entirely on private ownership of homes transportation primarily by car, um, absence of a reliable and flexible public transportation system, how much longer does this make sense? You know, you can see the way real estate values are, are moving now. There's a tremendous demand on the part of millennials um, for walkable, urban living. It makes sense. I want that too, frankly. Um, and so, with this in mind, I, I'm not here to ring the doomsday bell. I really want to keep the emphasis in my thinking and yours positive. Um, but I, I think we should allow ourselves, we should challenge ourselves to think about our community and how do we ensure that whatever that community is, is one that we can sustain over a long period of time. Um, so that's, that's kind of my, my going in concept. Um, what I uh, added in my note is that I think um, we need a better understanding uh, in order to capture this notion of sustainability. We need a better understanding of the actual and potential drivers of economic development. And now we, we all have ideas about what those drivers are. And we're all here tonight because we care about Wilton. We love this place, um, and, uh, and we want to be happy here. We want to see the town thrive. But that doesn't mean that we know all the answers. It doesn't mean that we shouldn't force ourselves to take a look at where are things going? What are people looking for? Um, you know, while I was sitting there um, listening to Jenny and thinking about what I was going to say, I just started to make a list of what are some of the things we might want to look at? Um, and they include, uh, do we want more business in town? Okay, it's a question that we can ask. Do we want something more from our school system than we're getting? Uh, do we want more services for the elderly? Do we want more services for families with young children? Um, do we want more open space for recreation? Or do we have an, enough already? Or do we have too much? Um, how about commerce and the mix of businesses? Um, it's a legitimate question to ask. Do we want corporate tenants? Um, is that important to us? Is that what drives economic development? Or do we want more retail? Um, and if we want people to come to Wilton from other communities, if we want to be a destination, how do we make that happen? Now, I, I, um, I know my time is limited. Uh, and I'm, I'm thrilled at how much of it I've already used. But um, <laughs> I'll just take a minute to give you a little bit of a feeling for you know, where I'm coming from here. Um, I've lived in Wilton for 26 years. 
raised my kids here, um, have had a very happy marriage here. Uh, we left for four years to go live in Europe, and we came right back, uh, and we were really very happy to do that. Uh, I'm a, uh, a marketing professional, branding uh, expert, you might say. I would say. I'm not sure anybody else would say. Um, and I've done a lot of market research. So that's kind of my, my perspective here is that uh, we can formulate hypotheses. Jenny's, for example, would be fabulous content um, on which to build a, you know, a, a project and look at, um, is this real? Is there really an appetite for it? Does it really make sense? Okay, maybe we don't have the kind of massive um, real estate that we'd need to attract a Tesla. But maybe there are smaller companies. Maybe it's a West Elm, or maybe it's a, uh, another company that's doing green things that would like a smaller space. There, if, if we could demonstrate that there's value in that, value to capture and value to sustain, then we can begin to talk about, all right, what do we need to do uh, in order to achieve that goal? Right? So it's, not, it's, a, it's a little bit of dreaming um, but then it's saying, well, how do we make that dream real? Um, so I said, let's figure out what success looks like. Let's take control of our destiny while we have a chance to do it, um, rather than wait for circumstances to overtake us um, and shape our destiny for us. Which means, uh, and I, I think I'll end my remarks here, that the, the implication of this, for me, is one that has a very, very strong and important governance implication, okay? And the, the question really is, how do we decide what's important and what needs to get done? Now, the, the, uh, the Wilton Economic Development Commission has written a, a wonderful document um, that I think is on your website, and if you haven't read it, it's really worth reading. It's, it's terrific. There's a lot of great thinking in it. Um, my vision is broader than just the economic piece, but for that, I think you've done really a, a superb job. And it's infuriating, I'll, I'll say, infuriating, that out of all of your hard work and all of your good thinking, what we end up with is a website, right? Like, what, what do we need to do to push this forward? So as, as Heather rightly said, at a time when our um, town government is changing, at a time when we have new leadership uh, about to take charge, this is a time for us as residents, as property owners, as members of the community to say, this is important and we wanna see this happen. Um, and there are, you know, there are firms that are only a phone call away um, that could come and consult to, for us uh, and, and begin to help shape the kind of long-term planning that I think is essential if we really want to safeguard our future. So, thank you very much. That was great. I really, I mean, that's, I think you hit the nail on the head, and it's going to take a commitment. It's going to take money and a commitment. Yep. And if the will hasn't been there, um, if the will is there going forward, then I think we do exactly what you recommend. And it can't all be volunteer, I don't think. It can't be. No. no we need I, professionals. Uh, stretched but, so far. Yeah. You know, in, in, uh, in architecture, you, you know this, there's a process called a charrette. Uh, and um, you can, uh, you can um, engineer it so that there's tremendous amount of community input. In fact, it's essential uh, for what we're here talking about tonight. But you have professionals who are taking the input, shaping the options, uh, creating the scenarios, uh, and then bringing it back and refining. It's a taste testing process. And that's exactly what I think we need. I want to compliment this gentleman for his comments. I think they're right on the mark. Uh, the town needs to be proactive in the planning function. Uh, the Planning Zoning Commission is a reactive body. It 
doesn't do any planning to speak of. Um, it has a document, but it's not a master plan for the future, and that's what we need. Thank you very much. Okay, next I'd like to call up Megan Abrahamson. Hello. Um, my presentation is also a little bit informal. I'm just going to speak from some notes. But for those of you who don't know me, I'm Megan Abrahamson, and I own Blue Star Bazaar in Wilton. But I first moved to Wilton about 36 years ago. Um, so I've seen Wilton through a lot of decades. I know the history of the town. Um, I also know what it's like to be a business owner here. But I also have lived other places. I've spent a lot of time. I started my career as a consultant. I went back. I got my MBA. I worked in strategic planning for some large retailers, including The Gap and Coach. And um, about five years ago, I started my own small business and have kind of been through the ups and downs of having a small local business. Um, sitting in the audience is also my brother, who is also a business owner in Wilton. Tim Labonte owns the Schoolhouse Restaurant. So as a family, I think we've seen a lot of um, you know, the frustrations of, of running a business in Wilton. But I think a lot of things have come up tonight um, that the idea that I would like to propose, um, I think, addresses a lot of these issues. One um, point that I think Dominic made very clearly is that um, retailers or growing businesses need support from other towns. Any growth we have, especially in terms of retail or restaurants in Wilton, you cannot depend just on Wilton residents. I mean, Anne even made reference to customers from Darien and Greenwich. When I do my social media, I don't just send it out to a Wilton zip code. I send it to Reading and Weston and New Canaan. I know that my brother's restaurant, he even pulls some people that come out from the city. So we do need something that's gonna make Wilton a destination. Um, and I also think that in being a destination, you know, a rising tide raises all ships. Retailers compete with each other, but they also need each other. So a good retailer needs another good retailer near it. And it is a snowball effect. They help each other. Um, people in Wilton want small shops. I mean, it, you know, this concept of being a semi-rural, um, you know, whatever the exact expression is. I know people don't want to see, you know, Kmart or Kohl's go into Wilton. But, you know, so people want shops that are within the character of the town. Um, and a, a problem with bringing those businesses here is affordable spaces. So a plan that I think would help address a lot of these things is if the town actually purchased on its own or with a development partner, purchased Cannondale, redeveloped it, and then especially for the retail spaces, sold those spaces as business condos back to retailers or business owners. As a business owner that has a long-term commitment to Wilton, I would consider buying a place for my business rather than always being the renter to a larger landlord, but I'm not going to buy a parcel or a development that's priced at $10 million. I might consider buying a unit that's priced at $500,000 and take on that rent as part of my business expense. Um, so I think if the town invested in Cannondale puts you know, the money in up front or you know, mortgages the property, you could even sign on occupants, people that want to buy those spaces from the beginning to help finance it. Don't look at flipping it at a huge profit. Look at it as breaking even and then welcoming businesses into Wilton that can afford to be here. Because when I see postings online, what would you like to see in Wilton? People say things like a tea shop, a cheese shop, a local bookstore. 
I would love to see those things in Wilton, but the reality of the rents in Wilton Center is that those businesses can't survive in Wilton Center right now. So let Cannondale be the place for that. Let it be a destination that draws people from other towns to come to the cheese shop and the bookstore and you know get their fancy tea, whatever it is. But then let those businesses own those properties. And I know there's also a lot of space behind the retail area in Cannondale. Um, you know, and I guess it's to be determined whether that space is for residential purposes or exactly what to do with that space. But I think first and foremost, look at the retail space up front. The, the current landlord I know is an out of state landlord and you know, has not necessarily had the commitment to keep those historic buildings up to the standard that, that they require. So um, that is my proposal, that the town step in, take control of Cannondale, seek out the businesses that should be there, and then turn that space back over to those businesses. Um, you're sort of preaching to the choir with, with <laughs> me and Lee. I mean, Panandale's been our hot button since the day we, we joined the commission. Um, and, you know, ironically, it's not just the center that's for sale. Trigby Hansen's building's for sale. John Paul's building's for sale. Garan, who owns the, the Cannondale Center, has the school. He owns that also. Al Snyder. I mean, the whole thing is in play right now. And it's a huge opportunity that we're going to lose if we don't do something. And it's got the railroad station, it's, you know, it's got Route 7, it's, it's, and it's doing nothing. It's adding nothing to Wilton's character at this point. It's a dilapidated mess. And, you know, if we could get the will and the money to do something about it, it's a, it's a, it's a home run waiting to be hit. I mean, it's, mm -hmm. it's a... <coughs> that, I mean, I want to ask, given her idea of having a town purchase Cannondale, you know, we, we come together to bond and purchase open space Development rights, Amber Farm, is this, this something that's a possibility of the town coming together to purchase the development area of Cannondale? It's certainly a possibility. I mean, uh, you know, Ridgefield bought, there was that building down that they bought right in the center of town. I don't think it, they did well with it, um, but it's certainly a possibility. I mean, it's not like it's not been done and it, and it can be done. You know, do I, am I optimistic that you know, given that we can't even put a turf field in, that you know that we're going to be buying Cannondale. No, but that's just my opinion. Yeah, or you know, is there a commercial partner that you know would come in and and you know partner and help that, make some profit? Off I of think it? there is a possibility of that <laughs> <laughs> if they can make money, they're going to do it. <coughs> I took this matter up uh, with the selectman probably 15 years ago initially. I submitted uh, two letters to the Planning Zoning Commission about this matter detailing uh, the elements in Cannondale and why it was so important for the Planning Zoning Commission and the Town of Wilton to address it. All of that fell on deaf ears. Now, uh, Cannondale has all the elements for tremendous success. Number one, it's got level topography. It has a river. It has public utilities. It has a railroad station. I mean, do you know how difficult it is to get a railroad station? It has buildings that can be reconfigured in a specified plan to create some synergism. So you can park your car once and walk to a few different stores. Uh, if you compare what has transpired in Wilton Center, where the capital has already been committed, it's too late in Wilton Center for large, large change, at least in the short term. But that is not the case in Cannondale. The capital has not been committed to Cannondale. So the development opportunity, and in the context of what Peter's already mentioned, with the nature of the ownership profile over there, all in advanced age, mostly, 
uh, they're all anxious to do something. The town of Wilton must take the initiative to, to do a master plan for that area. And it could end up being a tremendous uh, little village that was completely in the character of, of the town of Wilton, would be a very productive asset from a tax standpoint, and it would add something to the quality of life. But the town must take the initiative to do it, and it's going to take some money and, and, and an appropriate input from the public to make it happen. You know, you raised the issue of appropriate input from the public. I'm, you know, sort of the white elephant in the room at the moment. You mentioned turf. There's a major you divide. Mentioned turf. <laughs> well, somebody yeah. mentioned turf. Turf, yeah, yeah. You mentioned turf. Okay. There's a major divide over how much the town should be developing things to bring people in on a grander, bigger scale. How much the town will spend to do that. How do you surmount that PR battle? How do you, you know, you're, 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 at some point you're going to make somebody unhappy. If, if this initiative is not taken, what's going to happen is you're going to have haphazard development taking place in Cannondale with no coordination. And um, it's, you know, we're going to miss an opportunity that should, should not be missed. I mean, there's too many elements there for success. Um, you know, all of these things, state highways, public utilities, the ambiance of a river, I mean, this is, this is big time stuff. And uh, all we need to do is to put in place an appropriate plan so that a developer doesn't have to assume the risk in going before uh, the community and coming out a third class citizen. You know, uh, we should have a plan in place that could be implemented uh, as, as soon as that developer uh, is engaged. That's what should happen. Yes? I mean, what, what, what exactly do you mean when you use the word success? Well, I mean, it has to be an asset for the community that's in, in, in the context of, of maintaining the, his, the historic character of what's there. Um, and I served as president of the, plan of, of the Wilton Historical Society for a number of years. I've got a, an acute appreciation for historic structures. Uh, we moved them around town and, and, and maintained them, rebuilt them. Uh, you can take those buildings, put them on new foundations, reconstruct them so they have all modern mechanicals in them. They have a lot of the essential elements of a modern building which turns it into something very marketable and usable, but it doesn't look like it from the outside. Now, you know, the adaptive use regulation, uh, for those of you who are not familiar with it, was put on the books in uh, the late 70s. Uh, it has served the town of Wilton very well, and the purpose of it was to take the historic structures up and down Route 7, mostly north of Wilton Street,